we called each other a lot of names and then we, we had a beer and kissed and made up, so we're all good. I think it's obvious that you reference quite a lot of early Judas Priest material. I think I'm a very uh, confident performer, you know. We all know how you felt about it back then. And of course, you're getting really quite famous now, aren't you? You know, I see you all the time on YouTube, which is fantastic. It is incredible. Because it's still kind of... You know, Priest Maiden. I can be honest and share this opinion with you. Us rock and metal fans are the only sane people on the planet, I think. <laughs> it's probably true, isn't it? Hello, you metal pilgrims, and a very special welcome to all those who follow our Defenders of the Faith series. For today, I am once again honored to welcome a legend, Mr. Kenneth Downing of KK's Priest. KK, thank you so much for finding time hey. once again and joining me today. How are you? Hey, how you doing, buddy? How's it all going? Good, I hope. Yeah. I hope. <laughs> this is yeah. awesome. This is awesome. Well, I am doing as as well as I can here, you know, given the circumstances being in Ukraine, of course. But uh, it's a, it's an honor and pleasure to speak to you today. Yeah, it's great to speak to uh, to you also, you know. And um, yeah, it's fantastic that uh, you guys are still up there and uh, and making some headway and can uh, and do things like this. It's brilliant. I'll be honest with you. Heavy metal is what keeps me and so many other, you know, metal fans in Ukraine going through this horrible, horrible. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. And of course, you're getting really quite famous now, aren't you? You know, I see you all the time on YouTube, which is fantastic. Yeah. So congratulations to you and well done, especially in the light of with everything going on. Uh, well done to you. And um yeah, and uh, obviously you bring a great service to all of the metal fans in, in Ukraine, so that's fantastic. Well, thank you so much. It's an honor. I mean, Kenneth Downing is watching my videos sometimes. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't not watch your videos, you, you know, so it, it, it's great. Uh, we, we're all very happy that you're connected. This is absolutely awesome, and it's an honor. Thank you so much. I mean, can you believe it's been more than two years? Since we spoke last time, time flies. It is incredible. Yeah, I know. and uh, and it's all been very weird, hasn't it? Really, you know, with the uh, the pandemic and everything going on, you know, and uh, uh, the world's a crazy place. But I, I think us uh, us rock and metal fans are the only sane people on the planet. I think that is true. <laughs> it's probably true, isn't it? It is. <laughs> One of the most important, you know events in the world of KK Downing now was not even the fact that you released new music. I mean, we all knew it was coming, but the whole fact that you went back on stage once again and, you know, and performed in front of your fans, which is just a real treat for all the Judas Priest fans, for all the Kenna Downing fans, and for all KK's Priest fans now as well. So how was it playing that first gig with your new band? Was it anything? Did it feel anything like back on March 6, uh, 1971? Yeah. It was. Um, it felt different because obviously, you know, um, the, the first gig I'm playing with all of these guys for the first time in history. Obviously, I played with Ripper. You know, we did many shows together, so that was very comforting to have him on board. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is, you know, um, this is a new entity now with KK's Priest, and uh, you know, uh, lots of new songs. Uh, the show is different, you know, but. There's definitely the uh, the ingredients, the staple ingredients of me and who I am and what I do and how I sound and how I perform, you know, and that will never change. Mm -hmm. So, um, but yeah, interesting time. It's, it's been fun. We went then we went on to do some festivals, which was was fantastic in Spain and Belgium and Sweden, and and um, and we're going to keep on going, which is the good news. This is absolutely amazing. I mean, I and I'm sure. A lot of other fans are following closely what you guys uh, what you guys do, and I and I have to say from the YouTube videos, from you know all the clips and bits that I see online, I mean you guys sound amazing, and it's uh, it it finally feels like a you know a proper band now that you finally hit the stage together. You can see that it's not just some random project that you just put up together. I mean it's a proper band, and it's and it's amazing, and it's kicking, and uh, and Reaper looks great, by the way. So tell Tim, I'll, I'll, I'll text him as well. But Tim looks amazing. Yeah. He's like a, a stealth machine now. I think he fits into my clothes, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's true. I mean, because um, 
well, you know, not so long ago, we were doing the rehearsals for these festivals and, and Tim lost his luggage on the plane. So it was pretty easy for us to find some things for him to wear now. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, he was never big, big, but he has certainly lost a lot of weight now. He, he's working out. So, uh, yeah, he's a force to be reckoned with. So it's really good. And it, it does also, I feel like, reflect on his performance as well, as well, right? I mean, his voice is in great shape. Before we go on and talk about your new studio album, before you hit the stage with the with the KK's Priest, you also had a let's call it a warm up show <laughs> at Rock and Roll Hall of Fame together with uh, Judas Priest and uh, Les Binks was there as well. Yeah, that was that was interesting. Oh, that was another new band. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been on stage with two brand new bands. <laughs> <laughs> At the time, you know, and I've never been one to play with, you know, uh, to be uh, to, to play with a, an eclectic mix of people. That, but anyway, but so, I, I, and I, you've I, been doing this for more than 50 years now, right? I mean, so obviously, you've seen, you've seen huge festivals, you've seen small clubs, but Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and everyone says that it's a quite different kind of beast. Were you nervous before playing no, that, in all honesty? No, no, not at all. I mean. Um, no more nervous than you ever get whenever you're playing, you know. Um, you can play 50 gigs in a row, but you always have that kind of anticipation that you might split your pants or break a guitar string or fall over, fall off the stage or trip up or do so. You you have all of that, you know, all of that um, going on, but uh, we'll learn to live with it. But the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame was no, no different to that, really. Um, uh, contrary to what some people might say or think, I'm I really do think I'm a very uh confident performer, you know. I wouldn't go out there if I didn't feel that I was uh well equipped and uh could more than adequately um do what I'm supposed to do, really. That's play and perform and entertain. All right, now let's talk about what we all gather here to talk about today. Uh, obviously, the biggest news about KK's Priest these days is the upcoming release of your sophomore album, uh, Sinner Rides Again, which I'll be honest with you, I had a pleasure of listening to already, and I'll share my opinion in a moment uh, with you. But first of all, how was it working on this record comparing to Sermons of the Sinner? I mean, did you feel like you already have to match the expectations of what you did in the first track? Or did you feel more confident now knowing what the band actually sounds like because i remember you wrote the previous one you know as as a, basically as a solo project you know first right yeah um it was just a it just a, in my mind a continuation really you know um i think um i just again shut myself away in january each time and uh locked the doors and and just uh went to work and came out with the songs and, and all the ideas and the whole concept and everything, you know. And um, to my mind, it uh, it could have been a double album, really. I think the only thing was that um, um, the production changed a little bit. I decided to kind of uh, just basically make it a little bit more raw edge, the production, mm -hmm. you know, whereas the first album, a lot of the songs could have maybe even been on Stained Class or British Steel or or ram it down or something, you know, but um, I, I think in my mind what I was thinking was that um, I would do to this what we did to Painkiller way back in 1990 and just up the ante and and just metalise it a little bit more with the production and that's what I did, you know. And uh, the wonderful artist who was, who was wonderful, Jakob Hansen, um, I gave him the album to mix and to master mm -hmm. And um, and so he out, helped out in that process. And um, for that reason, it's good. I like it. It's tough. It's metal. And um, but I'm immensely proud of, of both the albums. And, of course, we played the songs. Mm -hmm. We played songs from both albums back, you know, back to back on stage. And uh, they just swim together wonderfully. So it's cool. This is absolutely amazing. Uh, as I said, I was able to listen to it already. And I have to be honest, I love it. I, I And I... Even more, I can I, I can be honest and share this opinion with you, I feel like, but I like it significantly more than the first album. I feel like it is 
more confident in a way, right? I mean, Ripper is uh, doing amazing work on this one. I feel like your interaction with AJ is much more coherent in a way. Yeah. No, I personally love it. Well, hopefully um, we'll improve again on the next record. So I guess um, that's, I mean, that's what we had to do all of those years ago. We had to learn as we went along. The more we play together, the more we are together, mm -hmm. you know, and we get more familiar. And at the end of the day, this is a marriage. You know, when you form a band with four of the guys, you are, it is a marriage, I hate to say, um, in that respect. But we have to learn, you know, um, we have to learn all of these skills together, really. Separately, we can learn our own skills, but we have to put them together in the studio mm -hmm. and on stage. And, and I had to do that in Judas Priest in 1969 onwards. You know, you're always learning, always improving. And, um, but yeah, I'm immensely happy. And, um, yeah, we've got another new video coming out at the end of this month to coincide with the release of the album on the 29th. Mm -hmm. So that's, again, that, I can't wait for that to happen. I'm so, I'm so impatient, but I'm not too bad, really. You know? <laughs> I, just, I, I have to occupy my, my mind, which is not difficult, you know. You mentioned last time that everything we can hear on the record, on the first record, was uh, basically your work. Did you give any creative freedom to the guys this time around? Yeah, yeah absolutely. We sent loads and loads of vocals over and stuff. But, you know, and um, and I, you know, uh, collaborated with AJ, uh, wrote a couple of songs with him, you know, but it's all work in progress. I think everybody, you know, slowly, um, I think it's fair to say that dare I say it, does it sound like an old person, which I probably am, um, you know, I'm kind of setting my ways a little bit, you know, I, I kind of know what I like and what I want. It's a bit annoying, I'm sure, but um, but I've been, not confined, but I've been in, uh, obviously, in a previous relationship and a collaboration, um, which was wonderful with Robin Glenn as a songwriting team. Obviously, in the early days, I used to do the writing myself. And I kind of forgot how much I enjoyed doing that now, you know. So I am in a good place. But everything that I did with Rob and, and Glenn, I mean, I wouldn't change anything for the world. We did so many great things together. But it was a collaboration, you know. And, and for that reason, I think the process went slower than it mm -hmm. should do, you know. Um because uh, there's so much deliberation. Oh, is this good enough? Should we do that? You know, we need to come up with a good sub-chorus for this. And uh, But now I just shut myself away and just get on with it, really. You know, and um, I like that. And talking about comparing this to earlier work, when it comes to song titles, I think it's obvious that you, you know, reference quite a lot of early Judas Priest material. But do you search for inspiration in what you did before that with Judas Priest when it comes to writing a new riff or a new track for KK's Priest? No, I think I just do what I do because I think I've, I've got the same body, the same mind. I play guitar the same. I think the same. I like the same stuff. I dislike, you know, um, things. But um, I'm pretty much etched in stone, really. You know, I mean, my sound, you know... Um, um, you know, I've got that package that I've I've been working with for like all all of my life, really, since I was like a teenager. You know, as a as a player and a writer, and so you know, I, is it possible for a leopard to change its spots or teach an old dog new tricks? Probably not. <laughs> but I've got so much out of my system that I want to get on with. Like say, and I like not having to wait around for other people to be involved, mm -hmm. you know, and to collaborate with. I just like to get on with it, you know. And um, But I'm, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to the future, obviously, um, and working with the guys even more. But we had to get going and push forward, you know, in uh, – I know the, the COVID was a big setback. Uh, we departed from the first label that re released the first, you know, uh, album. 
now we're with Napalm Records, which is a great home for us. And um, But you have these setbacks without having to find it difficult to write riffs or chord sequences or mm-hmm. things, you know. Luckily, that's not the case. Um, usually, it's artists, you know, get stuck in the mud. You know, record companies are going, give us the record. It's been five years now. You're stuck in the mud. Give us the record, you know, and you're struggling to come up with ideas. But it's the other way around here. It's other things that have played a part in. Otherwise, I, my original concept was to release two albums in one year, uh-huh. and I was very close to being able to do that. <laughs> Wow. So do you have want, any material for the next record already? Not that I know of. <laughs> Probably, but certainly I don't perceive it'll be a problem because I've kind of got this um, this thing now where I'm on a bit of a roll, really. So I do think about ideas for uh, new songs and the next record I do, yeah, all the time. You are about to go on a tour with nobody else but Paul Diano and what I consider to be the hottest new band in heavy metal, Burning Witches. And I think it's it's a great treat for all the classic heavy metal fans. I have enormous respect for Paul. I love Burning Witches. I just spoke to them on the Vulcan uh, and, uh, and I saw them and the girls were absolutely amazing. And what is also really interesting is, I mean, every Judas Priest and Iron Maiden fan knows about a little, let's call it a hiccup uh, you and Paul had back in the early 80s. And of course, I assume you went past <laughs> it uh, already. But still, I mean, how is your relationship with Paul right now? And why out of all the classic metal musicians in the world did you decide to in- invite him you know, on a tour with you? Yeah, well, first, I think myself and Paul kissed and made up in about 2000. Uh, about, no, it was 1986. Mm-hmm. I think all those years ago, um, we were in a hotel room. I think we were on tour and Bon Jovi were at the opening act. And we were there and I think Doc McGee was there, their manager and everything, and Paul was there. And so we had this wonderful moment where we called each other a lot of names and then we, we had a beer and kissed and made up, so we're all good. Uh, but, yeah, definitely. No, um, uh, I think the main reason I, I actually saw Paul, and I don't know how it happened, but I saw him playing some shows in South America and, you know, the fans were just going crazy, you know. Um, and that was so wonderful to see. It was so heartwarming, really, because obviously Paul was in the wheelchair. Hopefully he will be, literally be on his feet at some point in the future, I've heard. We all hope so. Um, but I'm thinking, you know, this guy's got so much to give Still, really, these fans are so passionate, you know, and uh, and so I had the idea of really uh, inviting Paul on to, uh, to do some shows. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm excited about that because it's still kind of, you know, Priest Maiden, but all with KK's Priest, a big lacking of that on top, you know. And then, as you say, we've got Burning Witches. They look great. They play great. They really do. They are the epitome of a all female Judas Priest, I think, because they pay uh, attention to detail. They look great, play great, perform great, you know, and deliver all the goods that you would anticipate, you know, from, let's say, uh, a, 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 a Judas Priest uh, performance, let's say, from 1983 or something, you know, I mean, takes me back. So that's nice to see. So I think the whole the overall package is... Uh, a massive dose of metal, and that's what uh, that's what we're about to do, and I'm really looking forward to it. And please tell all the promoters everywhere in the world, you know, that we're ready to go and we will come out and play. Well, you know. th- th- this is great. As I said, it's a real treat, and I truly hope that you guys will be able to make it to, to Ukraine with those three bands uh, very, very soon. You know, you have a huge following here, and as I said, heavy metal is what helps so many of us go through the war. Uh, these days yeah yeah it's uh it definitely is the um like i say our music that we're so passionate about and love uh, i mean it's, it's our life isn't it or massive part of our lives for me it is my life um but for so many people you know i found salvation really with music as a teenager because i could have been a very nasty ugly person ugly teenage person but you know, I found music and it gave me a path and a direction in life, you know, so, um, but yeah, it's a 
for so many people it's our saving grace and um and brings us all together yes absolutely and what you mentioned about paul just now it just shows how all embracing and how loving and caring our heavy metal community is actually worldwide right and uh, how we are passionate about you know helping and supporting each other this yes this is just amazing and we will continue forever as well <laughs> so as I can, but uh, yeah, we'd love to come back. I have pleasant memories of playing in Ukraine. I remember we uh, we uh, I, I remember we had a hotel which was a boat in Ukraine, and, it and was there was a very loud guy screaming there. Remember? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but anyway, it was incredible because the bar was open all night long, <laughs> which was wonderful. Talking about other things, you know, in 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 the world of KK Downing, you've got a, quite a book collection now going on. You have, of course, the uh, Heavy Duty Days and Nights and Judas Priest. You also helped doing this uh, this beauty over here, which I which is amazing. It just came to me a couple of months ago, and it's my new favorite, uh, you know, table book. Then, is there anything else you're currently working on? Can we expect another autobiography, an updated one, or something like that in the future? No. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> um, I definitely wouldn't rule something out. Um, yeah, but I was asked to be involved with that book then because because it was unique and it's got so many of my heroes in there yeah. and and hopefully some of my friends as well. You know, I've, it's been a great career um, to be a part of. Um, but yeah, that was a lovely thing for me to be able to do to be involved with the. Uh, the solid rock book, you know, and pay homage and tribute in my own way to all of these, you know, players, you know, um, because it has been a big family, you know. Obviously, uh, I think maybe a second, a, a, a second volume of that yeah. book because there's so many great players, may, all of been um, in different genres and that, but they, so, so many great p p players are also not in that book, but they deserve. You know the recognition and um, and the acclaim. So maybe I'll do something like that. You know. And we are speaking to you today on the sixth of September. And for those who don't know, that's the 49th anniversary of Rock Roller, as we all know, has been vastly ignored by the band, including when you were there throughout the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s. And we all know why. We all know how you felt about it back then. So looking back at it today, have your feelings and has your perception of Judas Priest's debut studio record changed at all? Yeah, I think now, obviously, the album has been remixed. I think the first time with uh, um, Chris Tangaridis, great producer, rest in peace. But, um, you know, so, but yeah, um, you know, I really do like the album and i'm looking forward to playing some songs from it to be fair you know um because um i think the it was such a obviously a massive part of my life you know whatever it's like you know um the great Ingve once said and i do quote him a lot of times when people say which is your favorite album you know or which is the the album, the album you just like the most. I, and and Ingve's response is, forget that. They're all my babies. They're all my children. You know, I love them all. <laughs> <laughs> um, because, you know, and I can see what he's saying because they're all a part, big part of his life, you know. And, uh, and, I, and, uh, and, I, and I have to say that uh, the same, really. So the main thing is that the fact is that... Um, I'm still alive and kicking and kicking hard, and I would like to revisit some of those songs and come out and play them. And um, and I think they're going to sound great when we play them live. Well, Ken, I can keep you here forever talking about heavy metal. You know that, uh, but uh, there is a time limit to these things. At least so people tell me. So just a couple of more questions. I promise I'll let you go. But uh, talking about other forgotten songs, I personally think it is absolutely amazing that you and Tim are given justice to some of the Ripper era. Judas Priest songs, right? Um, and do you plan to expand that catalog at all? Is there a chance we will hear Cathedral Spires live and all all the other songs from Demolition and uh, Juggalator? Yes. yes, I think the the first set list was predominantly put together for, uh, for obviously aimed at the uh, festival audiences, mm -hmm. you know, 
and as we all know, when you go to festival, it might be three days long or even more. You know, all the fans are there to see lots of bands, whoever it might be, their favourite bands, Megadeth, Powerwolf, Saxon, whoever, you know. So, um, but I think that um, obviously for our own shows, you know, where people uniquely buy a ticket, you know, for that specific concert, then I think that and there will be people that will have a, a definite um, um, uh education as to with everything about me and the band and the songs that I'm associated with, you know, so I think for that, for that reason, we can pretty much play anything we want, whether it's something that's never been played from rock and roller or as you say, cathedral spies or whatever bullet train or whatever it might be, you know, it's whatever takes our fancy really, you know, I'm sure we'll be fighting over it, you know, the set list, I want to play this. No, I want to play this. So, so difficult. Because someone asked me the other day, they said, you know, um, why didn't you play? He actually said, well, why didn't you play Bullet Train or, you know, or something from, you know, um, uh, Demolition? And I said, well, to be honest, it's a bit difficult at the moment choosing a set list because we didn't play anything from Nostradamus Ram it down and lost and corrected. Uh, turbo, point of entry, uh, defenders of the faith, um, stained class, killing machine. You know, um, we didn't play anything from any of those albums either. You know, yeah. there was probably lots of fans out there going, I want some defenders. I want rock hard ride free. I want free will burn in. I want blood red skies. I don't know, but you know, um, like I say, we have so many songs, KK's Priest songs that we want to, of course. Um, we, you know, um, anything could happen. I mean, we could probably end up just playing all of those songs uniquely, you know. But I think that, um, like I said before, I've embarked on this journey now. And, and um, I think that I was never going to leave my heritage, my legacy, and my life in the, in, in the dust. I want to always wanted to bring some of that with me, you know, into the present and, and and take it on this journey with me. Not all of it, but some of it. It gives me great comfort. And Rip is a big part of that as well. So we're doing that also um, for him. So it's important for us, you know, because we, we, we have great sentiments for our past and, and, and what we've achieved and, uh, and created. Um, so I think it's only only right and just that we enjoy those songs, you know, and because the fans certainly do. I've seen it with my own eyes, you know, on the few shows that we've played. So we'll see. But at the end of the day, we will be guided by you, you being a fan. All the fans will decide for us what we do. This is great. And as a fan, I'm telling you that I absolutely love that uh, uh, you have the new journey and uh, I love to hear the new songs from you, the KK's Priest songs. Uh, and of course, the songs that you wrote together for and for uh, Tim as well, you know, because, you know, that just makes sense and uh, it sounds great. And that's that's we want to hear. That's what we want to hear. And we will do definitely. Well, we just want the promoters now to bring this out there and give us some of those long tours I remember, you know, six or seven weeks without a break, playing five nights or more. Um, that's what we want to do because that's what's really going to be the test for us, you know, but it will certainly sharpen the axe for sure. Ken, as I said, I can keep you here forever, but there is a time limit. I know you have another interview uh, coming up next. So any last message for the fans, both old and new, anything you want to share with them? Absolutely. To all the metal fans in the world, because I know you are truly international, yes. um, you know, and a heartwarming uh, uh, part of this message as well for the fans in Ukraine. Just uh, want to thank everyone for their support uh, um, throughout my whole life, really. You know, uh, it's, uh, fans have been so gracious and it's been so rewarding, you know, to have the relationship. And uh, thank everyone for their patience, you know, um, 
uh, for waiting for the band, but we are here now. We are ready. We are promoting. We've got a new album coming out, more videos, and we've got more tour dates, and we are definitely going to come to a town near you, it, certainly in the next year or two, because we're going to go as many places as we possibly can. Anywhere that anybody wants us, we'll be coming and playing some Killer Cake Case Priest Metal. So until then, stay true, stay healthy, and we will see you soon. Thank you so much. This was KK Down and NKK's Priest new studio album, the sophomore studio album, Sinner Rides Again, is out in just a couple of weeks. And uh, it is great, believe me. So definitely, definitely check it out. KK, thank you. Well, you're a star, buddy, and thank you so much. You do such a great service to all the fans. Keep up the good work, and we'll see you at the show. Thank you so much. Keep rocking, man.